What's going on, guys? It's Dylan Dunlap. I am hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Dylan, it's good to see you again. And I'm so excited to see you uh, because there's so much going on with you, man. Like, finally, there's a label that said, hey, we need this guy. They finally realized that this guy needs to be signed and needs to be, like, heard all over the world. Um, talk to me about Network Music Group and like, how did this kind of happen for you? Oh man, uh, so <laughs> I just, I never want to feel like I, I, I'm such an independent artist in the past that I don't have any opportunities and nothing can really work out. I always just wanted to hustle and I wanted to do whatever it takes to get on the homepage of something to, to just work as hard as possible with my team. And I think that Network just saw all this grind that we were doing and, and the, finally the results that you're talking about that were seen online. And I, it just seems like the best fit. It seems like they're, they're very happy to have me on board and, and I want to make a huge difference with what I talk about in pop music and they see the vision and they respect it and they just want to amplify it. So it, it's great. Nothing's really changed in terms of uh, the workload. If anything, I've worked more and I firmly <laughs> believe that, uh, that that's that's all you need to do is just not like take a break because there are more people that are working for you I think that's a right. great opportunity to just keep working as hard as you can yeah I think that's the best that's the best part of being independent and grinding so much the way that you do that you know when these major opportunities come you're not going to just sit back and just watch everybody work because you've worked so hard to get here so you know I'm sure you still want to be as much uh, in control of this entire project as possible. Yeah, and it's also letting go of control. It's an absolutely amazing thing that there's somebody that is in charge of social media now. There's someone that's in charge of film and TV for pitching, and uh, it's an absolute dream to just have people, as you know, like where I came from, you know, and just playing for myself and whoever would come by on the street. I, I don't take this lightly that these people want to dedicate time and money into amplifying what we're doing right now did they ever experience any of your uh, any of your busking <laughs> no man thankfully no <laughs> what? what i mean those were you were playing shows like for hours man like <laughs> eight, eight hour days i will tell you this there's a music video that is on deck to come out that highlights a lot my friend tim that i grew up with he's been filming me for 12 years and we're incorporating all the footage into this music video so I'm really excited for that it's it's cool to look back on it and see just how much fun I had singing at like adoption events for dogs and cats and like I made 50 bucks and I was able to hang out with dogs that I was definitely way too allergic to and <laughs> that was fine like I was perfectly content <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> so you know now that the signing happened and then you dropped a killer new single that I'm like literally like the moment I put it on the Spotify, my jaw like dropped. <laughs> so <laughs> talk to me about seriously, man. And like your voice sounds different this time around. I feel like you kind of, in a sense, you kind of changed your sound a little bit or you kind of dis- rediscovered yourself. Like talk to me about this creative process for this track. Yeah, I actually had just the worst bronchitis in the world in January. And so I, I hold myself up in this apartment and just had this melody and then the call and response and but I couldn't get a single word out of my brain and I, I'm trying to practice in 2020 like patience it doesn't matter if you can't finish a song in one day well, unfortunately it took three weeks but it just felt so rewarding at the end of it I wanted to just like if I were to look back on everything that I've ever done I wonder what I would say what would I say to my 24 year old self and I just, I just remember laughing because that is such a serious concept. And so this song is basically a middle finger to that mentality that I had because I certainly take, my, take myself too seriously, present tense. And, and I, I got a question for a Q&A recently that was like, have you overcome this? And the truth is like every day is its own battle to realize that like my problems are, are my own, but, but I can get through them. And, and, I can laugh more. I really can. And I can, there's so much to be happy about, especially during this time each day. And 
I just had a great time recording it. I drove to Gilbert, Arizona with my drummer, Ben, and my guitarist, Kirk, lives out there. And it was the hardest thing to try and get any vocals out. So I, I don't recommend this to try at home, but I just forced it. And I, and I wouldn't stop until I felt like we had to take. And what you're hearing in the song is like three or four of me at the same time throughout the whole song. And it's got this rasp to it that was a total accident that we just ended up falling in love with. <laughs> I mean, I, I, was, I was up for it. If this is a new direction, like, I'm up for it. <laughs> but, um, you know, as, as far as, like, the sonics of this song, too, like, it sounds so anthemic. It sounds so full. Like, uh, Thank you. what was, I mean, was it just the three of you that were recording this? Like, did you have, like, a full production behind? Like, what, what was that like? The goal is to make every single song stadium ready. And, and I mean that from a production standpoint. Like, I want to envision us sweating our asses off in a, a freaking stadium that, that is just... Like, I want to make something that can pe be as easy as possible for people to sing along to. I want them to feel welcome and at home on a grand scale. And it's so fun and also difficult to try and capture that in the production because it was just three people. It was me, Ben Zellico, and Kirk Adolph. And, you know, the O's you're, you're hearing in the chorus are like 20 takes of us doing those together. And we wanted to basically fool you into thinking it was this crazy, massive production. But it's just three guys that uh, are doing what they love most. And, and that's it. I mean, I, I don't settle until we have a mix that is, is absolutely, like, there's nothing else I can do to it and as perfect as it can be, because the idea of perfection, it doesn't exist, but I wanna get as close as I possibly can, so I'm not settling because of a, a deadline, a release date, or something like that. I will not stop until it speaks the way that I envisioned it to speak. And so it took this whole year leading up until the signing for us to uh, decide, like, that's gonna be the first single. It's ready to come out now. It's pretty crazy to listen to a song a million times for eight months straight. <laughs> Why, why did you feel this was like the right debut with this, with this label? I, I think that I've never been able to capture like such introspective and sad lyrics in such a happy sounding song until now. I think that this is, I, I'm trying to use music as a, as an opportunity to talk about these things. Like I've never brought up, my history with medication before until this song. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be some big, sad ballad. Like I, I wanna find a way to normalize these struggles. And I think the best way to do that is to make the biggest summer anthem you can, but still try and find a way to talk about these things. Like I, I really struggled in 2019. I couldn't tell if I was feeling a certain way because of a medication that I was prescribed you know, going to therapy or if it was just because of circumstantial things or how I'm wired. And so this song like takes you into me trying to differentiate it and figure out like, well, why, why am I not happy even if I'm doing the job of my dreams? And I really just want to shed light on the fact that, I mean, there are people that struggle out there that don't look like they do. And I have no issue vocalizing my struggles through through my music. It's, it makes me so happy to hear uh, people's thoughts on it and whatnot, and hopefully creating this community, making it bigger and bigger. That was like one of the, the things that really caught my attention about you the first time I heard your music was that you really do speak to us about, you know, mental health. And you're, you're I mean, you're an advocate for this and you're able to kind of speak to us through your music. And I feel like that's so hard to do in the first place. Like, how did you first learn to be vulnerable like that to your audience. I learned that you're never gonna get 100% of the world to love you. I think that speaking about street performing days, I mean, that is the best opportunity to find out that there are people that don't just not love you. They, they hate you. <laughs> there are gonna be those people that stumble across your song and it's, it, it's not what they want. It's not what they wanna hear. And learning that ahead of time has made me just so confident in the sound that I want now and the message that I want to spread through it. I know it's not moody and artsy to, to be this vulnerable, but I, I'm just so happy that 
I mean, it caught this label's attention and we're, we're doing amazing things. And because I have not changed who I am one bit, I am still the same goofy freaking draft that tries to find a way to like, be as silly as I can, but at the same time, like bring up really, really important things that are not talked about in the music industry enough. And I just don't care. I don't care about how my vulnerability is received because I know as a listener who has received people that have done this, like I know that it can reach people as even if it's a small percent of people in some random bar in London, like I love that I'm there and I love that my, I don't know, my, my position at that time could be, I could inspire somebody to open up to somebody, not even me, somebody like in their own lives. I just want, I want to normalize that, that, that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to, to talk about these things and you deserve friends and family that take time out of their days to just listen and not try to fix your issues. That's good. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned that this song was kind of like uh, you had it done about eight months ago. So did this song or the arena feel kind of influ- was this influenced because of the stadium shows that you did was it last year or was it the year before because i feel like time is flying with one republic <laughs> that was 2018 yeah wow 2018 crazy how much how much influence that you know having those experience of this of performing live to a stadium you know how did that impact the way that you create your music now it certainly validated the fact that it, it would work you know i think that we should all strive to create music for the biggest room possible. I think we all have that in common as, as creatives, but certainly doing it helped me realize that, Oh, I, I I don't have to be that, that cover artist that I was, you know, like, I don't have to set the ceiling in terms of like, my music is good for clubs, but it's not good for stadiums. Like, like I don't have to define who I am. Like I can always break out of the ceiling. So that day it was July 4th, 2018. Ever since then, Uh, I've worked towards telling myself every morning, like, I'm going to make this happen again. And I will. And I firmly believe that. It it certainly shaped my attitude. I don't know if it shaped the sound. I've I've just always wanted to make just the biggest sounding music possible. And it's cool to know that it it works. I very much look forward to seeing um, what, what comes in store with working with UTA in the future. That's awesome. Now, one of my it's funny because I say proudest moments, but one of my proudest moments was watching the music video for Seriously because I, f- I felt like I can feel your excitement on every take. Um, <laughs> and <then> like, <laughs> like I felt like you, you were at the same time in disbelief that, you know, this whole team was around you and this was going on. Um, was that safe to say for this, for this video shoot? And like, what was that experience like? It was so uncomfortable. Oh my God. Uh, I just... <laughs> I'm used to like, I don't want to be a burden. I I'm still blowing my mind that all these people are there for this song. And because of quarantine, it was like so socially overwhelming to work with people again, but such a blessing at the same time. I love that again, like I didn't, I'm not changing my attitude at all, especially with this new partnership. I, I want to shed light on the fact that when somebody gets a new signing, I've seen this a, a few different times, like, they take themselves a little bit more seriously. They're, they're like a more serious act. So they have the more moody lighting and they have the, the moody romance stories portrayed in their music videos. And, and I, it's just not, it's not me. Like I, I don't know. I I just want to shed light on the fact that you can, you can do pop music, but not give up your personality. If, if you're just, incredibly silly like i want to give every take my all i want to sweat as much as i would on stage because technically this video is going to live online indefinitely i would hate to calm my persona down to get like the the moodiest take and i I just love to show you how much energy i have on a stage as much as i can in the video setting as well well it showed (laughs) it showed (laughs) i appreciate it It make (laughs) <laughs> so what's next for you like are you are you doing any um like online performances um during this like quarantine like what what has that been like for you for as far as like the live shows go 
typically when it comes to a live stream, I, I usually partner up with an organization. So I did a lot like at the beginning, March, April, there were certain uh, split screen live streams with uh, self care is for everyone. It's a company that has really amazing empowering messages on t-shirts and sweatshirts. So we, we did a conversation about mental health and then I sang a few songs. There was a, an account called tone it up through fitness that trying to raise awareness about a lot of cool things. Lately, I've stayed a little bit more silent on the IG lives as I do see them to be a little oversaturated right now. And, and I would love to have a purpose for doing it, whether it's a call to action to donate or a Q and A. So I, I am doing a Q and A tomorrow actually, <laughs> but other than that, yeah, it's, it's been so surreal to transition just to the internet. And it's been amazing to learn about how many people are listening to these songs all over the world. I, I think that we live in our bubbles, me being in LA, the most stressful thing is to just, as you know, like pack a room in LA and all you care about are your fans here in this city. Uh, the truth is there are people in Germany that are so supportive that I, I would love to work on my appreciation towards just them and, and spreading the song like wildfire out there. And so I'm, tr I'm trying to use social media healthily, but more, more frequently. Right. Well, I can't wait for to see what happens. You know, once once it's once it's clear to go on tour, once it's clear to see a show, I feel like you're going to be busy, busy, busy. So I'm I think we're going to that. We <laughs> might. We'll probably leave immediately when we <laughs> just get out of town. I think everyone. That's what I'm so excited for. I think it's going to be this renaissance of live music, yeah. and we all know it's going to happen, right? It's we all know that there's going to be that day where it's allowed again. And as, as we're seeing right now in certain countries, it is allowed, but it's just not safe for a majority of it right now. So what an amazing time to work on your live setting at home practice for no reason, not because you have a gig coming up, but just because you want to be ready for when there is a gig coming up. Right. And yeah, I, I think we'll be really busy. I very much look forward to being with my best friends again on stage. It's been way too long.